The world premiere of a new performance by award-winning choreographer Wayne McGregor opens at the Royal Opera House this weekend. Obsidian Tear is the latest work from the Royal Ballet's resident choreographer, who I'm very pleased to say joins London Live News this morning. Wayne, tear or tear? Tell oh, me. Ah, that's a very interesting question. You know, some people say different things, and for me, I like the ambiguity of it. It's both, actually, and it comes very much from the music. That The music is both extremely tender and sometimes extremely violent. And I can't think that relationship falls through all the way, throughout the, throughout the whole of the piece. It's a show which ballet lovers have actually already had a, a little sneak of. You did a live YouTube stream oh, yeah, I did, yeah. earlier this year. But for dance lovers that haven't yet had a chance to see it, what have they got in store this weekend? Well, I, I guess that it's, it's an all-male cast. So this is the first time at the Royal Ballet we've made a piece with just all men. I've made choreography now for 24 years, and this is the first time that I've had just a group of men in the performance. And I think what you see is it an incredible kind of raw physicality. The, um, the staging is extremely stripped back. The dancers are doing some uh, really extraordinary physical um, uh, behaviour, if you like, which hopefully is, is quite unusual to the viewer. And it hopefully just tricks the imagination into seeing um, some really beautiful images that connect in a really resonant way, hopefully in the gut, which is where I first heard and felt the music. And you, you, we talked about the, or uh, mentioned at least, the YouTube stream, which I think was uh, earlier this year, uh, perhaps even earlier this month. Yeah, it was a few weeks ago. Yeah. People the chance to, to see. Yeah, How a... much are you seeing that sort of technology opening up the world of ballet to new audiences? Well, it's so important, isn't it, to have access to um, how things are made. People are super curious about how things are made, how things are put together. And it's a real privilege now with technology to be able to have a kind of a, uh, an inside eye into um, the workings, the machinations of, of, of creative people working. Um, I think it's really extraordinary and, and for us it's really important that actually it's an access point um, for the dancer. If you can't come to the Royal Opera House um, uh, for live performances, which I would encourage you to, but if you can't, you know, that you can actually see parts of the performance either in cinema live or you can see parts of the performance in these live streamings that we do. So there's a contact to that work and it just excites people. It just keeps them really engaged and interested in this beautiful art form that we call dance. There is a sense, isn't there, that the world of ballet, the Royal Opera House, is, is an elitist place that perhaps isn't for all Londoners. How important is it for you to open up that world for, for every young Londoner to see? I think it's really important. I think, you know, one thing we all share is a body. We all have a body. We all have a kind of a physical signature. We all have a dance inside us. So actually, dance is the most kind of direct and communicative art form that there is. And all I would say is don't be put off by the Royal Opera House. You know, we're doing a real range of work. There's a diversity of artists and a diversity of people working there. And we all want to share this extraordinary work. And you can come now to the Opera House for... Um, all, all, all sorts of price points, you know, there's lots of ways in which you can come and see this work and you should just come and see if you like it. I think that's the first thing. Don't be put off until you've seen the thing. You mentioned diverse and you've had some pretty diverse partnerships in the yeah, 10 years yeah. that you've been the uh, resident choreographer uh, there. Tell us a little bit about what you hope your long-term legacy and impact will be. Well, I think, I mean, I never really think about legacy. I think about trying to work with people that are thinking in a different from a different point of view, have a different perspective. I think that, you know, diversity for me is about a diversity of thinking. And if you have a lot of kind of people who think differently in one place, different things emerge. And that's really extraordinary because, you know, ballet is a living, creative, contemporary art form. It's not just a heritage art form. We, we have an amazing array of kind of masterpieces of dance made over the last two centuries, you know, which we love to show. But at the same time, we're working with dancers who love dances being made of in, on them in real time with choreographers that are alive. It's a contemporary art form that's always in change and it has to be plugged into the real world and so what you need is to work with people who are working in the real world and who perhaps might not have ever worked in an opera house context but through sharing their knowledge and their artistry takes us all to a different place and I think that's really engaging for audiences too.